Guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be improving the efficiency of my diesel heater setup. If you watched my diesel heater in a box build, which you can check out right here, you know that I currently run a five kilowatt diesel heater unit. I found that this unit is a little bit overkill for my small tent setup, and I wanna reduce the weight that I'm dealing with inside of the diesel heater box, and also use that extra space I'm freeing up for better packaging. And to do that, I'm upgrading to a two kilowatt unit. This thing is nice and compact, and I think it'll fit my purposes perfectly. It has all the same electrical connections, so I can use the work that I already put into the diesel heater build for this unit as well. As with all Vever diesel heaters, they come as a kit with all sorts of stuff that you need to put together your own setup. So go ahead and check out my previous video on the subject to find out what else you might need to make your own build. Now, as you can see, this two kilowatt unit is significantly smaller than the five kilowatt unit, which is what I was hoping for. And as you can see here, I'm just replacing the five kilowatt unit with the two kilowatt unit using the same diesel heater build that I had before. So I don't have to do all that work again. So I use the case itself to kind of squeeze the five kilowatt unit in, but after shortening down my other Vever product, which is the pneumatic air jack, I had some leftover hardware that I thought I could use to mount up this new diesel heater. So what I did is I used the bracket from the extra long handle that was on the pneumatic jack, and I was able to make it into a mount for the smaller unit, because otherwise it would kind of rattle around in there if I mounted it outside the vehicle and all that stuff. So now it's mounted down to the case and here I'm just tightening down the final nut and we're all mounted up here. And to do that, I used some metal strap like this, attached it to those uh, bolts and put it through the brackets. Another thing I wanted to improve on the unit is to reduce the noise and also to control the heat a little better. There were some burn spots on the plastic case. So I thought I'd try this heat reflecting insulation pad to accomplish both of those goals. I started by taking some rough measurements, cut the thing down to size and just stuck it right on the lid right there and any other places that I thought needed some thermal reflection. Now it's time to start making the actual modifications because the outlets on the two kilowatt unit are small. Smaller. This is a, a two and a half inch outlet and inlet and I need to make those fit into my new BC off-road shop zip in diesel heater outlets. These things are awesome and they're made by a fellow GX off-road member. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to link it into the description along with the diesel heater unit from Vever. So why would you need something like this? Well, previously I was just putting the end of the outlet hose into the tent and that really doesn't create a nice seal and keep out the wind and the cold. So this really allows you to kind Kind of seal off that opening a lot better. Those outlets also rotate so you can control the direction of airflow. The main efficiency gain that I'm going to get with this new setup is that I would previously take air in directly from outside, heat that up, and then it would go into the tent. But you can actually just reheat the air that's already in the tent. So what I'm doing here is I have the dual outlet from BC Off-Road Shop, and that allows me to draw air in from the already heated tent, and that goes into the unit. The heating occurs in the unit and then on the outlet side it's the already heated air plus the extra heat that the diesel heater produces so I can run the unit on a lower setting and save energy while I'm putting this together I'm going to add a bit of filtration as well so I got these activated carbon sponge filters just off of Amazon and I'm just cutting them to size and kind of sandwiching them in those outlet housings Now I'm gonna improve the electrical and I talked about this in my initial build. I am not happy with how these pass-through terminals worked out. So what I'm gonna do is get a brand new one in there and block off whatever holes are left over here and just to improve the setup so I can have the wiring separate. Cause right now I just coil the wiring around the handle and it just stays mounted. So I removed these old guys and I got this new guy which has a 
five pin setup so I can have all the wires running through one terminal instead of two. So how this works is you wire up the diesel heater side here. The side with the cap kind of sticks outside of the box and that is covered for weatherproofing. And then this is how you plug in your controller the little LED controller, as well as your electrical wiring. So this is gonna have your 12 volt power and ground going to it as well. So you just kind of feed all those wires in through here at the bottom, and then those plug in to the diesel heater box side, just like this, and then you screw it down to create a waterproof seal. And this is all gonna be inside of the box. And then the other side is gonna be inside of that plastic cover you see on the ground over there. First, I just need to decide where the hole is gonna go. And I'm pretty sure it's going to just go where the old holes were. So I'm gonna have to expand those. So I found the correct hole saw bit, attached all that stuff together and got the drill and started drilling through that hole. After trying to fit the plug-in, I discovered that this extra plastic here was in the way. So I got rid of that using the edge of the hole saw. And then I was able to fit the plug-in, as you'll see right there. Everything fits up great now. So I'm just hooking up that pass-through terminal that gets mounted on the box side. And this is how that looks. So the wires that come out of the diesel heater, like I'm showing here, go directly into those pins right there. And I'm gonna show you that in a bit, but this is basically how the diesel heater box is gonna look when I'm not using it. It's much cleaner. I don't have the wiring all coiled around the handle like I used to. And then I'll have all the wiring attached to this side and can plug it in whenever I wanna use it. And so this is how the plug setup will look, except for we'll just have wiring coming out of the outside there. So I'm gonna get started on the wiring here and I will give you a look at how to do that in just one sec. So this is how it looks when you're done on the inside. So this is all gonna be protected by the box. So I'm not too worried about taping that up or anything like that. It's just kind of by the fuel pump and the air inlet. But I'm gonna show you this outside a little more in detail. So you get the three wires for the LED controller thing and the two wires for your power and ground. You put them into the terminal and you just screw down this little screw on top of the wire. It's as simple as that. Just make sure that you match the wires from both sides so that obviously one wire terminal connects to each appropriate wire terminal on the other side. So I went with number one is red, two white, and three blue, and four red and five black for ground. Four is the big red one, so that's the 12 volt power, and the five is obviously the, uh, the ground wire. So that's how I decided to wire it. I put in some extra duct tape here just to take up space to make sure that no water gets in. And that's just to, again, waterproof and weatherproof this for the long term. And that is my final wiring setup. Now this just plugs into the terminal, like I said before, like that. Let's give this new unit power and see how it works. So I connected the power and ground to my solar battery setup. And now I'm just plugging the power into the plugs that we just wired up. And we're going to see if we can power up the unit. So as you can see, the LED display, it's a little bright out, so it's hard to see, but uh, we're gonna see if this thing turns on and it looks like we did good because the fuel pump is running just fine and you can hear the unit starting to power up. Right here, I'm gonna give you an idea of how nice the insulation I just installed is at quieting that fuel pump down. When it's closed, you can barely hear it. From this first startup, it seemed to me like the two kilowatt unit also gets hotter faster, so you don't have to give it too much time to warm up, which is really nice and also helps with efficiency by saving that extra power. To get from the 2.5 inch outlet to the three inch outlet, I used a silicone three inch to two and a half inch reducer on the right side there and a plastic one over on the inlet side. Nice. So when I'm using this off grid and I'm camping, I'm gonna use the BC Off-Road Shop outlet like this, and it's in there very securely. Those zipper channels work very nice. I'm gonna put the inlet here and the outlet there. And again, I'm gonna just recycle that air like I showed you before. So instead of taking air from outside and heating it, I am just recycling the already warmed air. And that allows me again to run the heater a little bit lower and save that power. 
one thing I really love about diesel heaters is the fact that you don't really take up any tent space like you do with like a bulky propane heater or something like that. It just zips into the corner there and you have all of your square footage for sleeping. Another thing I love about diesel heaters is the air is bone dry. You don't get a layer of moisture on the inside of the tent that you need to let air out before closing up your rooftop tent. It's all good to go and the air is super cozy. You also don't run the risk of the oxygen depletion that you do with a propane setup. So you don't really need to sleep with that carbon monoxide sensor, although I would recommend doing that regardless. And I only ran the heater for about 10 minutes and the air is already piping hot. All the pipes are up to temperature as you can see here. And I can't hold my hand in front of the outlet for more than a few seconds. So after that, I powered the diesel heater down and unplugged and put the cap back on. I'm gonna need to figure out a way to plug that upper hole, but I'm sure that won't be an issue. Now I'm just doing a temperature check, making sure the insulation is working and it's doing great. No more hot spots on the outside of the plastic and it seems like it's doing a great job. I'm really excited to try this out camping again. So subscribe to see more of the diesel heater build. Be sure to check out the links in the description from Vever and BC Off Road Shop and we'll see you in the next video.